So in this video, we are going to be automating notifications in Teams and Outlook to assignees. So this can be for task data, it could be for case data, for account data, anywhere that you have an assignee or an owner or multiple assignees. And how it works is you can select which tasks that you wanna send notifications for. So in this example, I'm gonna send um, for these two tasks to these two people and click the run flow button and that's going to send a notification to linda who's my test user and that sends an email notification to linda who's my test account and it looks like it comes from me because of how we set up the flow and it links her directly to the tasks that i want her to update so if i click on it it opens directly in planner like so and her team's notification looks like this so this is coming from the workflow bot and says, hello, have you made any updates for this task? Here's a link, thank you. So let's jump into how to do this. Uh, like I mentioned, I'm using planner data. This planner data comes from multiple plans. I have a tutorial on how to do this. I'll put it in the video description if you need planner data. Um, but the idea is that the Power BI report is using whatever filters you have applied to your visual or your report page when it sends the flow. So when we're selecting specific rows of data in this table, we're filtering what we send to Power Automate. So we're not sending notifications for everything in our data set. We're sending only for the selected items. So you would want to, before you say, click the button and um, filter on the things that are not completed and then select specific items unless you wanted to send notifications to everyone for every task. Um, I feel like most commonly project managers are wanting to get updates on very specific things. So I feel like that really lends itself towards this kind of application where you can select what you want to ask for updates to because nobody likes nagging people to do tasks, right? Or update their case or whatever. We're working with, let me duplicate this tab so you can see. Just remove this and get this back to where we were at in the other tutorial. So in the prior planner data video, what we did was we had our assignees concatenated into a single column like this. So for example, this one's got two assignees in a single cell. We did that with a calculated column. We also had a separate table for our multiple value assignees so that we could use that to filter. And from the comments I got on that video, I got that people were a little bit confused about why we have both. So the calculated column, is for the multiple values in a single cell. The dimension table of assignees is what tells you which assignees are on which task with their assignee ID. And we're gonna need that to run this flow. Um, you also are gonna need it if you're wanting to filter on assignee. So those are where you would filter by a specific assignee name as you would drop your assignee name onto the filters on this page and then filter on a specific assignee name. So you'll see any of the columns that contained Christine Payton um, are showing here. So this one has two values, but it's showing because I am one of the values there. So backing up a step, I'm going to take out our um, calculated column for assignees and I'm going to add in our assignee ID. If you have an assignee email address field, use that instead. I just happened to not get the email address when we set up our flow for this. So we're going to have to get that as part of our flow process. So you'll notice when I selected the assignee ID, because this is a multi-value field and we have multiple assignees on specific tasks, it split some of these task rows into two. So this one, um, so this one now has two rows with the same task name because there were two assignees for that task. And that's what we want because it really simplifies the flow that we set up to have that broken out like that. So we have our assignee ID in the table. You can put whatever else in the table you want to. And now we need our Power Automate button. So that in the visual pane is gonna be in this one here in the bottom right-hand corner of these little icons. And it's got some steps for us to follow. So number one, add data. So we need to add in any of the fields that we want to pass to Power Automate to use in our flow. So that's going to be the assignee ID or the assignee email address, if you have that. I'm gonna use assignee ID. And we also need to pass it the task ID because we need that to create the hyperlink to the specific task. And we need the task name because we need to tell the assignee which task we're talking about. And in my case, I also need the group ID and the plan ID because this data set has multiple groups and plans in it. If your data set only has one, if you're following the first tutorial where we got a specific plan, 
Um, you can skip these because they won't be in the data set anyways, but uh, I'll show you the difference of how we set up the hyperlink in a little bit. So we've got our data fields in here. Now we need to create our flow. So we're gonna go to this ellipses menu in the visual and go to edit. And this does require a Power Automate license. However, Power Automate comes bundled with most of the Microsoft 365 packages. Usually that's not the game stopper. Um, this does not require a Power BI license. So if you don't have Power BI Pro, that's fine. I'm just using the desktop app here. The thing that triggers pro licensing for Power BI is sharing a report. And we're not sharing a report here. We're just performing automation on the data in the report. So we're gonna create a new flow. So we're gonna do the plus new menu and then create an instant cloud flow. So that's the one that will trigger when we push a button. And I'm gonna try and zoom in on this a little bit. Okay, so here's what we got to start with. I'm gonna click on new step and we're gonna add a loop here. So we need to apply to each because we need to apply to each row in our table, right? So apply to each. And for the output from the previous steps, we want to select the rows from our Power BI data. So that is this Power BI data item here. And it throws in two apply to each loops. I don't know why it does this because the second loop is just looping on the items of the first. So that doesn't make any sense. You can just take this out in the second one, just delete it. It still works, trust me, I tested it. <laughs> so we're gonna say apply to each row, just rename that. And the first thing we need to do is create our hyperlink to the specific task that we wanna link our users to. So where we get that from is if we go to planner, so if I pull my planner plan over here for you to look at, I'm just gonna close this. So the URL format follows a really specific pattern. So I'm just gonna copy this out it in some larger fonts so you can see it. All right, so if you look at the URL, this part right here is gonna be the same every time. So we can copy that and use it. And then the rest of it is based off of the IDs in our data. So this is the group ID here. And the plan ID starts right here. And the task ID starts right here. So if you are working with planner data and you're only working with one specific planner board, then copy the entire thing up to the task ID. So that's this here. So that'll have the group ID and the plan ID in it. If you're working with a data set that has data from multiple plans, only copy up to this group ID equals here. And then we're gonna insert those fields from our data set. Copy this, go back here. So we're gonna add a compose action. This is gonna create our hyperlink. So for the inputs, we're gonna make an HTML link here and we're gonna do that so that we can specify the link text so we can make it look friendlier. So we're gonna put the task name as the link text and then use the URL for the link. So we're gonna do an anchor tag space href equals double quotes and then we're gonna paste in that URL chunk that we got. And then I'm gonna insert the group ID because we're at the group ID equals, we need to put something in there. And then we're gonna do an ampersand and plan ID equals this one here. And if you had a single planner project plan link, you would have just pasted it in here and skipped the group ID and the plan ID, but we all need to do the task ID ampersand task ID equals, and then we're gonna click on the task ID down here. And then close our double quotes and close our tag. And then we're gonna put in our link text. For our link text, we wanna insert the task name. So that's gonna make a clickable link that has the task name. You click on it, it goes to the task. And then close our anchor tag, so oops, forward slash A. Okay, so my UI glitched out and I had to reload it, but <laughs> let's let's rename this too while we're at it because I forgot to rename it. And um, let's call it send task. All right, so we created our hyperlink. Now we need to add in our notification actions. And the notifications, I would choose one or the other, Outlook or Teams. I wouldn't do both because I feel like both is a little spammy, but I'm going to show you how to do both. So we're going to add an action. Let's do the Teams notification first. Let's search for post message. So post message in a chat or channel is the one we want. And we're gonna post as the Flowbot um, because it's easier. 
The Teams notifications are kind of tricky to get to send as yourself because when you send a notification, it likes to use an existing thread with that person if you have one. And so it'll force you to get the ID for that conversation before you post to an existing conversation. The Flowbot bypasses all of that, so it's a lot easier to use. So we're going to say post in chat with Flowbot. When we select that, it's going to add in some more fields for us. So for the recipient, we can use the assignee ID from our data set. So make sure to choose that one and not user ID. So user ID is the identifier for the person who pushed the button. We want it to be the assignee ID from our data. If you have the email address, definitely use that. I am only using the assignee ID because I don't have the email address in my data set. So for the message, we can do something friendly. So you could do for this is you could do two buttons and um, you could have one button that is like serious threatening overtones button and you could have another one that's like friendly button and then you can pick and choose which kind of notification one you send on a given day and then we're going to insert into this message body the hyperlink output here from our step above and say thank you so that's the team's notification and the outlook one so we want send an email v2 if you want it to look like it's coming from you, use this blue one with the Outlook icon. If you want it to look super generic, like it's coming from a generic Microsoft mailbox, you can use this one with the envelope icon. I prefer it to look like it's coming from me, so I'm gonna use this. And for the two, we actually need to get the email address because um, this is an email, right? So we need the email address. So let's add a step right above the email. If you already have it, obviously skip this part. But we're going to use get user profile because their email address is going to be in their profile, right? So get user profile v2. And for the UPN, we just put in our assignee ID like that. And then for the two here, that'll make their email address available as dynamic content. So here's the email address. It's called mail. And for the subject... I'm just going to put the task name in the subject line for no particular reason. So that was the task name from our dynamic, dynamic content. And then we can link them the same way that we did in the Teams notification. And by the way, the to address, I really highly recommend when you're setting this up the first time to put your email address in the to for both the chat and for the email to test it and make sure everything looks good and works correctly before you put in your assignees in here. Because it's very common to like typo something in the email um, or to set something up incorrectly and you don't wanna be sending that out to your assignees, right? So make sure it works first and then put in their email address. And then do the same thing as before. So grab our hyperlink from our outputs from our compose step. So that's it. Let's test it out. We need to save it. Oh my gosh, it's loaded up off the screen. Let me see if I can. Okay, so I'm going to save this and close Power BI and reopen it. Um, it's glitched out where it won't let me scroll up to the top of the screen. So I saved it down here. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Uh, my flow button is gigantic. I'm going to make it smaller. So to, to get back to where we were, we're going to do the same thing. Ellipses menu, edit. And that'll give us a list of our flows and we can apply the one we just made. So that's this one here. There's a little check mark to apply it. We need to apply a flow to the button is the step that we're doing now. You can also do it from inside the flow. So if I edit this, there's a save and apply button in here. You do need to use the normal save first before it'll let you apply it. So we got that. Now we just go back to the report with this little back arrow and we can try this out. So some important things to note are that, like I mentioned earlier, the button is going to take whatever data you have selected and filtered down to in your visual and send that to Power Automate. So if you don't have any filters on your table and you haven't selected any rows, it's going to send the email to everyone in the table. If that's not what you want, make sure to filter it first. Also refresh it first. Um, because you don't want to be sending notifications based on stale data, right? So hit the refresh button. And I'm going to select our couple of rows and make sure it's working by running the flow. So these buttons, by the way, you have to hold control when you click them to get them to fire when you're in the desktop app. If you're in the web app, then you don't need to hold control. And there's not currently a way to style this button. It'll say triggered 
even if you don't have a flow linked to this or if your flow fails, it'll still say triggered. So right now, Power Automate doesn't talk to Power BI to tell it that it failed. So you'll want to go in and check the flow history if you're having any kind of problems with it. Um, I'll show you where that's at. You can get to it through here, but I kind of like going through the web version. So if I go to make.powerautomate.com and just go to the My Flows link on the left, it's got all of the flows here. So I can look at the history by just opening this one up and I can see that it succeeded. So if you have any kind of trouble in here, if your flow fails, you can open this step up and look and see which part of your flow failed. But ours worked fine and the email, we wanna double check and make sure that the email looked good. Let's try our link. And it looks like our link did not work. So if we go back over here, and it looks like I have an extra double quote in here. So take that out. I'll go ahead and add a note to that part of the video. So you all don't do that. Uh, we do have our close quote in there, which is good. So let's save and apply and try that one more time. All right, let's try our link now. That one worked, so we're good to go. So next steps here, you could potentially put in all of the tasks for a specific assignee into an email. I haven't figured out how to do that yet, but when I get to it or if I get to it, I will do a video on that. Um, that way you could potentially uh, send this out to all of your assignees without selecting specific rows, but I think there's use cases for both, right? So that's all I have for you today and thank you for watching.